This is our technique for the realization of a cervical ismic circlage in case of a seven week uh, pregnancy. It's a patient with the past story of too late abortion and uh, with a C scar section. The first step of the procedure is to try uh, to open the vesicovaginal vein. And for that, we use a classical bipolar and cold scissor. And our goal is to reach the left uterine artery. And we will open the anterior leaf of the brow ligament just lateral to the uterine artery, which is clearly seen now. It's really important to try to work as bloodless as possible because during the pregnancy, the vessels are very fragile. The next step is to continue the vesico-vaginal dissection. And as you see, the dissection is quite complex due to the previous C-scar section. And for that, we have to take a very small bite of tissue to coagulate this tissue and to cut progressively from the left aspect of the uterus to the right aspect. Small movement, every time a good hemostasis, and we will cut only the tissue that have been previously controlled by the bipolar. We will do exactly the same steps that we have previously done on the left side. Traction of our peritoneum, dissection, and we will reach our uterine pedicle, the right one. Now we can see the posterior leaf of our brow ligament through this window and the uterine vessels are clearly seen. The next step is to identify the urethra and to do a window just above the ureter and lateral to our uterine vessels. For that, we use the bipolar. We open the posterior leaf of the valve ligament and we increase the window like we do normally in the prolapse surgery in case of uterine conservation. The ureter now is far and below our operative field. You can see the ureter, you can see our window. We can now face a device from the posterior leaf of the valve ligament to the anterior one. We will do the same on the left side, identification of the left ureter, and we open a window one centimeter above our aorta. For that, the assistant must track the posterior leaf of the ligament, and we use the bipolar and the cold scissor to open the posterior leaf of the ligament to pace a device through both aspects of the brown ligament that allows us to do a complete window above the ureter and lateral to the uterine pedicles. You can see now the instrument is completely through the entire brown ligament. Now both passages are done. It's time to put the mesh. It's a 15 length centimeter mesh and one centimeter large. We pace through the left window, as you see. We put the mesh in the retro cervical ismic area. 
And as you see, we will try not to grasp the uterus. It's a gravid uterus with the seventh week's pregnancy. So we will try as less as possible not to manipulate the uterus directly. We paste the mesh through the right window. We tracked both meshes cranially. That allows us to fix the mesh in the retroisthmic area, as you see. And we will close the mesh by intracorporeal knotting technique. It's important not to tie too much of the mesh. And with this technique, even if the mesh is outside the, the uterine pedicles, there is absolutely no uh, complication on the fetus growth. As you see, we don't tie the mesh. We just apply the mesh on the cervical ismic area to decrease the risk of late abortion or premature delivery. The assistant locked the knot till we paste the second stitch. As you see, the mesh is well placed. We ensure the knot. And we will cut the mesh excess. We prefer in these uh, cases to intraperitonize the mesh and we will use a non-absorbable stitch which is a T bone 2 O stitch for two reasons. The first is to fix the mesh in the ismic area. The stitch will block the mesh at the ismic area and the second is to cover the mesh to decrease the rare cases of uh, bowel obstruction. Intracorporeal knotting technique, running suture are the keys for a good mesh placement and a good peritonization. Now, we tracked the vesico-uterine peritoneum and we will fix this peritoneum on the uterine ismic area that allows us to cover as much as possible the mesh. It's important not to go too deep inside the myometrium because if you go too deep, you expose yourself to uterine bleeding. In the post-operative time, we don't use any treatment. We just use a progestin, a 600 milligram day for one week. As you see with this maneuver, the mesh is completely intraperitonized. We can now close or not. It's mandatory 
to control the pregnancy viability two days after the surgery by a sonographic exam. So this is our technique for the cervicoismic cerclage on a gravid uterus. I hope this video was interesting for my colleague and thank you for your attention.